Hello and welcome back to our Lord of the Rings LCG solo progression series. And today's quest is the Druidon Forest, which is the second adventure pack in the Against the Shadow Cycle. Quick reminder, in this series we're playing through each quest in chronological order of the game's initial release. And we'll only be using player cards that were available at the time of this quest release. I'm calling this deck Every Woes Has Its Thror. I'm a little bit proud of that deck name. I've included a copy of Thor's map, uh, primarily so we can legitimately use this deck name. In this scenario, we will encounter the Woes people. They live in the Druidon forest in the treetops. And uh, this is not a particularly difficult quest, but uh, this deck is really anti-archery, which this particular scenario, there's a, a, a fair bit of archery. And so between all the hit points we'll put out and the healing, Archery will not be a problem for us. This is a, a deck that starts slow and ends really, really explosive. Uh, the resource acceleration comes in the form of Master of Lore, which is not a card I use often, but it works well here. We're just going to try to spam allies, and uh, hopefully we'll do well. This, this scenario is known for archery, but also for the prowl mechanic. So we generally just want to spend our resources each round. No Steward of Gondor or other resource acceleration other than Master of Lore. Let's get to the quest and see how we do. All right, opening hand is good because I usually like to have a Mithrander's advice. Uh, it's good that I already have a Master of Lore, so we'll just keep this opening hand. <clears throat> okay. There aren't a lot of three cost allies. Sylvan Tracker is an exception, of, as well as Master of Lore. I think the only other three cost ally I have is a couple of Daughter of Nimrodels, but mostly I want to use Master of Lore to lower the two cost allies down to one. And uh, we can just get a lot of allies out and play using that method. Okay, so the pursuit. The leader of the Underworld Cabal from Minas Tirith has fled with his remaining henchmen. You have followed his trail to the Druidon Forest, hoping to bring the nameless villain to justice. For setup, we search the encounter deck for Drew Burry Drew and set him aside out of play. Here is Drew Burry Drew. Uh, he'll come into play in stage three. <clears throat> and then we will move on to side B. We have to make 11 progress to advance. The Druidon Forest is a wild and dangerous place. It is said that Woses, reclusive forest dwellers, still reside among the trees. You wonder if your quarry has considered the dangers of this course. When revealed, reveal one card from the encounter deck per player and add it to the staging area. My preference is for it not to be an enemy, but with all these cheap allies we can put out a chump and you know deal with any enemy that might come out. We're going to get a secluded glade, which is immune to player card effects. So definitely the preferred opening here. All right, so resource phase... And let's use Denethor's action, exhaust him to look at the top card of the encounter deck. We can move it to the bottom of the encounter deck if we want to, and we don't want to. This won't hurt us in any way. Uh, let's go ahead and just get going here by playing a Master of Lore. And we'll draw two cards with Berevor as well. And we'll quest with Master of Lore and with Aragorn. A lot of times, if you have an enemy come out, you won't quest with any characters. Uh, and we're never we're really worried about threat because of Aragorn's refresh action is all the threat reduction we need. So if you were to have an enemy, uh, you could put out maybe an Amphalos Herdsman for chumping and uh, put out maybe a Miner of the Iron Hills. That would be six attack between Aragorn, Berevor, and the Miner. Chump with the Amphalos Herdsman and you can destroy a, a six health and defense enemy. But that's not how things went. Okay, Stars and Sky, Prowl 2. So what the Prowl mechanic means is when that comes out, we have to discard two resources because it says Prowl 2. If we don't have the resources, we don't have to discard them. So there's not really any kind of teeth to this keyword. We'll just spend our resources. And using Denethor generally, a combination of him and uh, Hinamarth River Song, will know what's coming. Uh, when revealed, each questing hero must pay one resource or it is removed from the quest. Uh, so Aragorn will be removed from the quest and our threat goes up by two. And we'll travel to Secluded Glade. It is immune to player card effects. Refresh and next round. Let's use, Den use Denethor's action. Uh, so this is going to surge on us. Let's just go ahead and move it to the bottom of the deck. And we will 
Go ahead and let's try to get Henmarth if we can. Well, there's three copies of him in the deck, so we'll draw two cards. There he is. It's just nice to know what's coming. Uh, so Master of Lore can't reduce one cost allies to zero. So any one cost card we have to just pay full cost for. So we'll use Hinamarth's action, exhaust Hinamarth Riversong to look at the top card of the encounter deck. All right, it's Overgrown Trail. There is a um, card in this deck called Ithelian Tracker, which is a ranger. So what I'm going to try to do is just go ahead and play a Mithrander's Advice action. Draw one card for each hero you control with a printed lore resource icon. So we'll draw three cards. And I didn't get uh, the Athelian Ranger. <clears throat> what I could do is play Daron's Runes and discard the duplicate Hinamarth. Let's do that. Drawing two cards, discarding Hinamarth. All right, so despite my best efforts, I won't be able to get him into play. Let's use Master of Lore. Exhaust Master of Lore to name a card type. Lower the cost for you to play the next lore card of that type by one until the end of the phase. So we're going to say ally. And so this two cost Glaia one only costs us one. And now we'll just go ahead and exhaust Glaia wine to draw a card. And we won't quest with Aragorn. We're just going to reveal Overgrown Trail, and our threat goes up by four. And there's an action here. We'll exhaust Aragorn. Uh, action, exhaust a ranger character to place three progress tokens on Overgrown Trail. So we'll do that. Rather than questing with his two, three progress is better than two willpower. Okay, so refresh, and next round. Okay, we'll use Denethor's action. Another Overgrown Trail. Let's exhaust Bearboard to draw two cards. There is an Athelian Tracker. Okay, so we're going to exhaust Master of Lore to lower the cost of the next ally we play. So we're going to spend two to play Master of Lore. And then we will exhaust Master of Lore to lower the next ally by one. We will put out uh, an Athelian Tracker. Let's go ahead and exhaust Athelian Tracker to lower the... Uh, we'll use him for this action. Exhaust a Ranger character, which he is a Ranger character, uh, to place three progress tokens on Overgrown Trail. So that leaves play. Let's draw a card with Glaywine. And we're out of resources. Um, again, we won't quest with Aragorn. We're just going to let our threat go up. We reveal Overgrown Trail, and our threat goes up by four. Aragorn will exhaust to put... Three progress on Overgrown Trail. <clears throat> and we'll use Hinamar's action to look at the top card. Okay, refresh. So far, kind of the easier locations coming out. Drawing a card with Glaywine. And two with Barabor. And we'll use Athelian Tracker to put three progress on Overgrown Trail and clear it out. Uh, let's go ahead and play one, two, let's play Envoy of Pelar Gear. She enters play, and when she does, obviously, uh, as usual, uh, after she enters play, add one resource to a Gondor or Noble Heroes resource pool. Denethor is both. And then we want to try to use Master of Lore each round, so we'll exhaust Master of Lore to play. The next ally will be uh, a Warden of Healing. Let's move her down here. And again, exhausting Master of Lore to play a one-cost ally, or a two-cost ally for one, which will be Warden of Healing. And now we're going to quest, starting to get some willpower out. So this is usually how it works. The first couple of rounds, our threat goes up, we deal with enemies potentially, and then eventually we just overrun the encounter deck. Okay, Glade of Cleansing has a threat of X. X is equal to the total archery damage or value of the highest archery woes enemy in play. There aren't any, so it has a threat of zero. It tells us that each woes enemy will gain archery one, as long as that's in play. So we've made five progress, one, two, three, and four, five. We'll travel here, use Denethor's action, and that's good. If, if we needed to bury the card, then we follow it up with Hinamar's action just to know what's coming. Refresh, next round. You know, we don't have uh, unexpected courage in this deck.
Okay, drawing two cards with Barivor. And one with Glaywine. And we will go ahead and use Master of the Forge's action again. We have two of these. Let's go ahead and spend two to put out a Sylvan Tracker for just two. And now we'll exhaust this Master of Lore to discount uh, our third Warden of Healing. Okay, so we will quest. We'll leave a couple of, uh, well, we'll leave one of the Wardens of Healing ready. All right, we reveal Men in the Dark. This poor guy's got an arrow in his eye. When revealed, each hero must pay one resource or take one damage. Now, if the card were to say each hero must either, you have a choice between the two, but the way that the game works is if it ever says each hero must X, you have to do X. Then if you can't do X, you have uh, sort of an alternative penalty. So each hero must pay one resource. I can't. No hero has that. So alternatively, alternately actually, uh, we would each hero takes one damage because I could not pay the resource. So look for the word either. Either gives you the multiple choice. Uh, if no hero takes damage from this effect, men in the dark gain surge. Heroes did take damage, so it does not surge. And we made six progress, one on the current quest. This leaves play. Let's exhaust Warden of Healing to, de uh, to heal Barivor and Denethor. And we'll use Denethor's action to move Druidon Elite to the bottom of the deck. And then we'll see another uh, one of the, uh, there's basically two enemies, Druidon Elite and Druidon Hunter have a combined health and defense of six. So that's what you could potentially deal with early on. Okay, refresh next round. And when, when is possible, I wanna try to move these to the bottom of the deck rather than deal with them. So we'll move him and then peek at what's coming with uh, Hinamarth, it is the same card as the last round, Men in the Dark. Okay, drawing two cards with Barivor. And one with Glaywine. Um, I don't necessarily want to play Mithrander's Advice. I wouldn't mind getting the third Master of Lore out, but you don't want to be so singularly focused on getting all three out that you overdo it. So we just need to use Master of Lore's action twice. Uh, let's do this. Let's play uh, this Envoy of Pelar Gear. There is a location that can come out that'll that'll make it so you can't gain resources. And so we couldn't gain a resource using Envoy of Pelar Gear's response. And so I'd like to get her out when, when that location isn't potentially in play. So she's going to give a resource back to Denethor. Then we'll use Master of Lore to reduce an ally by two. Uh, let's do... We want willpower, really, I think. So Hunter of Lamadon. And another Master of Lore action will reduce this Hunter of Lamadon as well by one. As a response, but we're not going to use it. Okay, we'll quest with Aragorn. We just need to leave uh, one Warden of Healing uh, available for healing at this point. Okay, we'll quest... You can see the willpower starting to creep up. We reveal men in the dark. Same thing. We can't pay resources, so each hero that couldn't pay a resource gets a damage. Since an, a hero was damaged, it does not surge. We made nine progress. So that is 12 on the current quest. And we advance. An untimely end. As you move deeper into the forest, the wilderness quickly swallows all trace of civilization. Pushing through a dense patch of undergrowth, you come upon a dark and tangled grove. The scent of death strikes you. 17 progress to advance. In the grove, the fleeing traders lie slain, pierced by poisoned arrows. As you search the pain-racked corpses for the body of their leader, the ominous echo of drums begins to sound among the trees. You desperately begin to retrace your steps from the woods, lest the fate of the traders becomes your own. Uh, there's uh, some text here. Archery damage must be assigned to allies of Abel. Uh, so we're fine with that. There's plenty of health on our allies, such as Ithilien Tracker. Eventually, all these Outland characters will have a lot of health due to Anphilos, Anphilos Herdsman. Also, Sylvan Trackers are great soak for archery damage because she heals herself every round when she readies. 
Okay, let's go ahead and heal uh, Aragorn and Denethor. And refresh next round. <clears throat> okay, Berevor will draw two cards. And Glaewine will draw a card. Let's play our third copy of Envoy of Pelargear. She refunds Denethor a resource. Let's look at what's coming, actually. Okay, this is that one that would make it so that we cannot gain a resource. But now that we've played all three Envoy of Pelargears, we're not worried about this. We'll use Master of Lore to reduce the next ally. We'll play uh, Erebor Hammersmith. Do we have any attachments? No. And again... Master of Lore to play another Airborne Hammersmith. Alright, we want to make progress. We don't want to advance quite yet, but uh, we'll make plenty of progress here. And we reveal Garden of Poisons. We made 11 progress. And we can't travel here. There's a travel effect. Each player must pay one resource to travel here. But I'm not worried this is not going to hurt us because we don't gain resources from card effects. Except for Envoy of Pillar Gear, but we have all three out. So this will just, we won't be able to travel here and we're not worried about the threat. We're going to have a lot more willpower. Okay, let's use uh, Hinamarth to look at what's coming. Stars and Sky is good. Refresh next round. Might spend a couple of rounds just turtling and getting things out and ready for the final uh, stage. Drawing a card with Glaywine and two with Berevor. All right, we want to just spend our resources as usual. Um, we will. Let's go ahead and play a Dayron's Runes to draw two cards. And we'll discard. Uh, I think I had a Hinamarth in here somewhere. Here he is. We'll discard Hinamarth. Okay, we'll use Master of Lore's action to lower the cost of, I suppose, a Sylvan Tracker. Let's do that. And then we'll use this Master of Lore to lower the cost of and Airborne Hammersmith. Okay, so we just need to quest for, well, let's just see. Four progress. Five progress, that's what we need. Well, now we have it. Okay, we reveal Stars and Sky Prowl 2, no resources to discard. Prowl would make us discard two resources. When revealed, each questing hero must pay one resource or it is removed from the quest. No questing heroes. We made five progress. And we did not clear an untimely end. Okay, here is Denethor's action. That's good. Uh, let's go ahead and use a Warden of Healing just to heal the damage uh, on our two heroes. Refresh. Next round. And so the end of this round we will actually lower our threat using Aragorn's action. We'll draw two cards with Berevor. I'm guessing the Master of Lore, the third copy, is just going to be buried deep in our deck. Let's exhaust Glaywine. Okay, we'll go ahead and draw on uh, Daron's Runes. Draw two cards and discard a Mithrander's Advice. Okay, so at some point we're going to have to bite the bullet and pay for a Master of Lore. Let's exhaust Master of Lore to reduce the cost of this Master of Lore. And so now we can't use one of the, you know, we can't use both actions. We'll exhaust Master of Lore to lower the cost of, uh, well, eventually we, we'll, we'll wait, I suppose. We can put out another hunt, Hunter of Lamadon. Okay, we don't want to make any progress, really. We want to quest just so that our threat doesn't go up. And so we'll quest with just two characters. And we reveal Lost Companion. When revealed, each player removes one character he controls from the quest. We'll remove Envoy of Pelargear. 
uh, if we're able to. Then, if any player has no characters committed to the quest, remove all characters. We had we do have a character, Aragorn. So we made zero progress intentionally. Let's use Denethor's action. Uh, I have the ability to destroy a Druid, Druidon Thief with um, Expecting Mischief, but I don't want to necessarily pay the resource, so let's move him to the bottom of the deck and use... Okay, there we go. There is uh, Hinamarth Riversong. Refresh. And during the refresh action window, we're going to use this refresh action. We just raised our threat to 49. Refresh action. Reduce your threat to the starting level, which I think is 30. Yeah, we're at 30. So our threat goes all the way down to 30. And uh, so I'll indicate with this time counter that Aragorn has used that power, that, that action, once per game. All right, so next round. And no more cards to draw, so we won't be using Barrevoir and Glaywine anymore for that. We know it's coming, so I, I'll wait to use Denethor's action as well. Just going to put out some cards here. Uh, let's go ahead and exhaust Master of Lore to lower the cost of... Well, we don't really have to play every single card, I guess. We could just move on. I'll just take a couple of rounds. We'll exhaust Master of Lore to lower the cost of Athelian Tracker. And Master of Lore will lower the cost of um, Athelian Tracker. Master of Lore will lower the cost of Athelian Tracker. I think I might have played a uh, Miner of the Iron Hills somewhere in there which is fine. We don't have him in the deck because of his response. We have him in the deck mostly because he gives us that one attack that we might would need to combine with Aragorn <coughs> and Berevor early on if we had a six health and defense enemy come out. Okay, so we just need to quest for four at this point. So here we go. And we reveal Garden of Poisons. We won't travel here. We'll refresh next round. Again, you don't have to. Do, we could move on. I'm just going to have some fun just playing everything. There's no reason not to set ourselves up. So here's Master of Lore. Let's lower the cost of one of these. Well, this uh, final copy of Sylvan Tracker. And then we'll lower the cost of uh, another Miner of the Iron Hills. At this point, we're committed. Let's just go ahead and use all the. Uh, just play all the cards. Okay, Druidon Drummer. Uh, we don't, you know, we couldn't, we can destroy her with expecting mischief, but mostly I want to save that for the Druidon thief because of the prowl and the surge. We'll just let her come out and we'll, uh, be able to defend against her. No problem. There is a car that can bump, uh, attacking enemies for plus three, but, uh, Aragorn can handle that. So we'll just let her come out. We'll quest. And that's enough. We reveal Druidon Drummer. Each woe's enemy in the staging area gets plus two. And so we've made no progress. She obviously boosts herself. We'll optionally engage her. And uh, we'll defend with Aragorn. Attacking for one. There's one that could give her a plus three. Uh, yeah, this is it. Attacking enemy gets plus one for each hero the defending character controls with no resources as plus three. So four against two is just uh, two damage on Aragorn. And we'll attack her for four. We have plenty of attack out here. We'll go one, two, three, and four and destroy her. And we'll use uh, Hindemarth to look. It's Druidon Hunter. Refresh. And next round. Let's exhaust Master of Lore to play a Daughter of Nimrodil. We'll exhaust her to heal Aragorn. And then we'll exhaust Master of Lore to play, for one cost, a Miner of the Iron Hills. Where is that at? Here, here he is. Okay, so we're going to use Denethor's action to move this Druidon Hunter to the bottom of the deck. And then Hinamarth will reveal Ancestral Clearing, which I don't really like this location at all. Because now cards will cost 
ex- an extra cost. But we'll, we'll travel here and get it out of play pretty quickly. So we'll actually not play any resources until we've cleared this. All right, so we need to quest for four, so for eight. There we go. We reveal ancestral clearing, and uh, I meant to leave a, a, a hero ready because you have to to travel here. You have to exhaust a hero. So there we go. We 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 made no progress. We'll exhaust Aragorn to travel here, and uh, we'll refresh. And again, we while this is in play, the cost to play each player card is increased by one. Okay, next round, Denethor is going to look. That's good. We won't spend our resources. We'll wait because we don't want them to be more costly. So we'll just wait in a little bit. Okay, so we'll quest just so that we make ultimately four progress. Then we'll remove one character. Okay, so we reveal Lost Companion. Each player removes one character. We'll remove Envoy. And uh, then if any player has no characters committed to the quest, remove all characters from the quest. So we made three progress. One, two, three. That leaves play. Hinamarth will reveal a Druidon Thief. Refresh. Next round. I don't think... I think I'm just going to let him come out and destroy him with expecting mischief because if I bury him, something else might come out that I don't like. So let's lower the cost with this Master of Lore of this... Burning Brand, we'll attach that to Aragorn. This is really all about stage three. We want one on on Aragorn. We'll exhaust Master of Lore to lower the cost of our second copy of Daughter of the Nimmerdale. And we have no more cards to reduce with Master of Lore. So now we want to uh, go ahead. One, two, let's play two Anvilas Herdsman. Uh, they, when they're in play, each Outlands character you control gets plus one hit point. So plus two on all Outlands characters. These are great, you know, uh, stats for archery. Okay, we're going to quest past this finally. We're going to send just a few questing characters here. All we need is just to make one progress. There we go. And we'll play after committing characters. Uh, expecting mischief. I'll put it up here. And it says play during the quest phase before the staging step. This is the only time you can play it during this uh, this action window after committing characters. We reveal Druidon Thief. He surges and prowls, but before so, before that happens, he is damaged immediately by expecting mischief for two, so he's destroyed. He doesn't surge. He doesn't prowl. And we made our final progress to uh, to finally clear an untimely end. Okay, so we've moved on to the final stage. 3A, the passage out. You sense that the edge of the forest must be near at hand, but Wozes are master huntsmen, and a band of them block your path. Your situation seems hopeless. There are simply too many of them. Not really. I I think probably in multiplayer that might be true, but in solo I never struggle like this at all. As they begin their attack, you realize your only hope of survival is to convince the pukel men, I guess, that that you are not their enemy. Add Drewberry Drew to the staging area. Here is Drewberry Drew. Allies cannot defend against him. And while he is in the victor display, characters get plus one willpower and defense. Unless Drewberry Drew is in the victory display, the players cannot win. And we are now in siege questing, so let's switch over. Now instead of willpower, we're using defensive values. Uh players defeat the stage they've won the game so we have to send him to the victory display somehow and it says it here on this card characters use their willpower instead of attack when attacking enemies and I'll, I'll read this again here in a minute when we actually deal with Drewberry Drew for now we can't travel anywhere because we still can't pay the travel cost of Garden of Poisons Okay, so we'll just go on to the encounter phase, and Drewberry Drew will engage us uh, with his engagement cost of one. He doesn't have archery. He's going to get his shadow card, and he, we cannot defend with allies against Drewberry Drew, so we'll defend with Aragorn, five attack against two, and he has plus two, so obviously that's going to be seven attack, which would destroy Aragorn. That's why we have Burning Brand 
to cancel that. And so five against two means three damage on Aragorn. And uh, we'll just go ahead and heal that up with Daughter of the Nimmerdale and with Warden of Healing. Okay, so now we attack him. It says here characters use their attack, or sorry, willpower instead of attack when attacking enemies. So basically the idea is that we're not really attacking. We're trying to convince, hey, we're friends. Uh, we're, we're not the enemy. If an enemy would be damaged this way, place progress tokens on it instead of damage tokens. And I'll read a little bit more in a minute. But basically, I just need to attack for nine. Nine willpower. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so nine willpower. We use our willpower instead of attack when attacking an enemy. Nine willpower minus three defense is six progress, not damage placed on Drew Burry Drew, uh, it tells me that when an enemy has progress equal to its hit points, which is six, add it, that is the number six, to uh, or add the enemy to the victory display and place those progress tokens on the quest. So I did verify if we put 20 progress on Drew Burry Drew, it doesn't transfer over. You're limited to progress equal to the health points. So we're going to go ahead and transfer over the six progress. Uh, so he goes to the victory display, and then we add, uh, we place these progress tokens on the on the quest. So he goes to the victory display. When he's in the victory display, characters get plus one willpower and defense. So he goes to the victory display, and we'll just go ahead and just just boost everybody by one willpower and one defense. A little bit of a process here. Let's go ahead and ready everybody. Make sure I can see all the cards that way. Make sure that we've done that. Yeah, we're, I thought I had hit negative. So whereas like Miner of the Iron Hills hasn't really been useful for, for questing now with the defense, we're in siege questing. It'll be questing for two. Okay, so I think we've done it. And so we will use Denethor's action. Uh, we should have used Denethor's action. We just read it everybody, but uh, Denethor's action, Overgrown Trail's good. Okay, so next round, final round. Uh, so we don't have to use Master of Lore. I think we can get out all of our, our all of our cards. One, two, three is all we need. So one, two, three. Let's put out all of our characters. And all the Outlands characters are boosted by a total of plus three now. All right, we've done it. Uh, Fifteen rounds to play everything, and you know, we had a few cards left over. Okay, so let's just quest. We're in Siege questing, so we'll send everybody. We'll leave a couple of uh, Athelian Rangers ready. And we reveal Overgrown Trail. We'll exhaust two Ranger characters to put three progress each on overgrown trail and that means we've made 55 progress plus six that is 61 so really easy pretty much I don't know if it's really possible to lose this quest with this deck again the worst thing that could happen is that maybe during setup you got you know a uh, a druidan thief which maybe surges into a druidan thief into and you know you might have a couple of enemies possibly to deal with, but we have such cheap allies like, you know, we could put out a couple of Anphalos Herdsmen or um, even Envoy of Pillar Gear in the first round or just the two cost. We don't have to start off playing Master of Lore, so we can chump and usually attack back no problem. We could take some undefended damage from Druidon Drummer or Druidon Thief, and we don't worry about our... Uh, threat going up so we don't have to quest with anybody so we can leave Aragorn and Barovor ready 
generally you do want to use Denethor's action just to keep from getting something nasty. But uh, that might be the only part of the scenario where we might be a little bit worried is during setup slash round one or two. But uh, in my experience, we can get out the allies no problem. Uh, we never had to chump that I remember in this quest. Yeah, there's no allies we chumped with, but sometimes you have to do a little bit of chumping. But that is it. That's the quest. Hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join me. Next quest is Encountered Am Amandine, or Amandine, sorry. And uh, it's one of the easiest quests in the game uh, before we then move on to Nightmare Quest, the first Nightmare Quest in the game. So uh, a little bit of uh, some new things around the corner. Looking forward to you joining me for that, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.